Should We Hunt Demons? <laughs> That's the title of today's Daily Dose. Okay, before we talk about demons, let's start with this question. What are we, as Christians, called to be doing? Well, Jesus gave us some clear instruction when He called us into the Great Commission. So let's start there. Matthew 28, beginning verse 18, says this, And Jesus came to them, and He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So, what should we be doing? Our mission on this earth as disciples of Jesus is to make disciples, to introduce people to Jesus, to see them baptized into Christ, and then disciple them in this new life that they now have in Christ Jesus. So... I think we can all agree that this is the main thing. This is how we love God and how we love others. We live out this great commission that Christ has called us to. So, this is what we should be concerned with. This is what we should be engaged in. But check this out. Jesus also expanded this great commission as recorded in Mark chapter 16, where He says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes it will be baptized, will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And then he says this in verse 17, And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all. They'll place their hands on the sick people, and they will get well. Wow! So, Jesus is telling us here, in addition to to making disciples. It looks like Jesus' followers as part of the Great Commission will also be engaged in healings, in miracles, and in driving out demons in spiritual warfare. But let's notice the order of things here. The miracles and the spiritual warfare, the casting out of demons, for instance, those things happen as a result of preaching the gospel. Those things, that spiritual warfare stuff, accompanies or follows after the preaching of the gospel. See, Jesus doesn't tell His disciples to, to first hunt down demons, and then if they get around to it, preach the gospel. No, that, that's not the right order. See, the demonic activity and the opposition, and then the response to driving, to driving back and driving out that demonic is a result of actively first engaging in the Great Commission. See, we preach Jesus, we make disciples, and as a result of doing this kingdom work, we may encounter some spiritual opposition, even demonic activity. So our response when this happens in the course of ministering Jesus, our response to this demonic activity is that we deal with it, we drive it out, and then we get right back to preaching Jesus, worshiping Him, lifting up His name. Now come on, Jesus modeled this for us. Jesus didn't go around looking for demons and spiritual principalities of darkness to cast down. Instead, Jesus, it says in Scripture, it says, Jesus went through all of the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. That's Matthew 9, 35. Now, when Jesus did this ministry, did demons show up? Yes, they did. From time to time, they would show up. And Jesus would cast them out, and then he would continue on in his mission. See, it was the same thing with the Apostle Paul. Paul would enter a town and begin to preach the gospel of Jesus. He didn't show up and then start on some search-and-destroy mission of demons and principalities in that community. No. He, he would preach the gospel, and demons would then show up and stir up trouble as he preached the gospel of Jesus. So what would Paul do when they showed up? Just like Jesus, Paul would silence the demon, drive it out, and then continue ministering Jesus to the people. So, how should we respond to all this? Should we be on a hunt for demons? Is that our calling as the church today? Should we be railing against spiritual principalities of darkness? Is that our mission? Should we spend our time shouting at the devil? Is, is that the Great Commission? I think not, right? Look, I don't want to give any of my time to those kinds of things. Instead, I want to give my time. I only got so much time right now, right? 
I want to give that time, my attention, my devotion, and my worship to Jesus. After all, when we gather, we gather to lift up the name of Jesus. When we gather, we invite the Holy Spirit to show up, to move, and to minister in and among us. What do we do? We come together and we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And then if something demonic shows up in the midst of all of that, we pull it aside and we quietly and with the authority of Jesus, we deal with it. We tell it to go. We drive it out. Then we get right back to what we're really there for, and that's to worship, to preach the good news of Jesus, to minister freedom, to pray for one another, and to fellowship with one another. Look. We understand that Satan and demons are powerful spirits, but they're not God, nothing at all like Him. They're not omnipresent, they're not omniscient, and they're not omnipotent. They are limited, and they are not worthy of our time or our devotion. Look, but when we turn our time and our devotion toward them, when we give this demonic these principalities of darkness, our attention, and actually start speaking to them, we empower them. So what should we do? James chapter 4, verse 7 says this, that we should submit ourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. Come on now, notice James doesn't say, spend your time focusing on the devil and his demons, rail against them, talk to them, shout at them, and then they're going to flee from you. No, we're told to submit ourselves to God, to turn our focus, our life, our attention, our energy toward God. And finally, I would argue that the best form of spiritual warfare is actually preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus. I mean, come on, how did Jesus send the devil away when he was being tested in the desert? Jesus spoke the word of God and the devil would flee. Look, preaching the Word of God brings expansion to the kingdom of God. It glorifies Jesus. God's Word alerts us of Satan's schemes, and it serves as a two-edged sword to defeat darkness. That's 2 Corinthians 2 and Hebrews 4, verse 12. Well, I'm going to end with this. Be blessed. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness.